Hi, it's Phil again from Pine Podiatry. So today I'm going to talk about the difference between a $20 shoe and a $200 shoe. So looking at these two, from arm's length, they don't really look too much different. But what I want to explain is the difference between them. So patients will ask us all the time in clinic, me and the other podiatrist, first thing we want to do is get people in better footwear. So people will say, well, why, would I, why wouldn't I buy a $20 shoe when, you know, instead of this $200 shoe? What's the difference? Why, why don't I just save myself $180 and wear a shoe that's, um, you know, do something else with that money? Now, that is a good question, but today I wanted to set, demonstrate the difference between a shoe uh, that is well constructed and one that is not. So the first thing that you need to know is a cheaper shoe won't have proper shanking. And I've done a video on this previously. So there's a bit of a review of that topic, but basically the three point test is very simple to do. You bend it, twist it, and give it a squeeze. So they're the three tests that I recommend doing. Now, of course, be careful with the foot. We don't want to destroy a shoe, but immediately when you do a bend test, you'll notice if it's bending through the, through the middle and not through where the toes bend, that's the issue. So this shoe doesn't have proper shanking and it doesn't have proper construction. <coughs> Whereas this better quality shoe, this New Balance, you see not bending nicely through there, proper shanking through the rear foot and a nice solid but padded heel counter. So that is the real difference. If we actually look inside, I have um, murdered this poor shoe just to demonstrate the difference. So when we actually pull off the upper and look at the mid sole, a cheaper quality shoe will, uh, a, a poor quality shoe is made, for, often they're made out of this honeycomb sort of pattern. So it's, it's not, it actually doesn't have any inherent rigidity and it doesn't give good shock absorption and, and, and cushioning either. That's gonna collapse out very quickly. So a lot of cheap kids shoes and cheap adult shoes are made like that. But it's not, it's not a good choice. And you can imagine if you wear, you buy this and you go and do some walking in it, it's not long before this shoe is just collapsed out and it's not gonna give you any support at all. So if you have heel pain, arch pain, foot anywhere, pain in, anywhere in your foot and ankle, this shoe is just not gonna help you. Um, a good quality shoe, properly constructed, will have a, a, a proper uh, midsole, whether it's injected mold or other, other construction types, that will give long lasting compression and, and rebound and will also hold the foot itself give it good support uh, so that's basically the difference and if you think of it this way if you spend twenty dollars on a shoe get an injury need to come and see us or another health professional for that injury you're much better off prevention prevention is much better than cure so invest in some good shoes at the start and you're less likely to, to need anyone else's help down the track so I hope that's helpful. Um, comment on that. If you've had a cheap shoe that's been good for you, or if you've had the same experience buying cheap shoes and then gone to better shoes and found them better, let us know and let us know what shoes you like and don't like. Uh, and we'll have a, have a conversation around that. Okay, uh, it's good to see you again. We'll talk next time. Bye.